Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Horror Movie News. Today we have one desperate dad, one missing daughter, and multiple screens, and also two special guests. Today on Horror Movie News! Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. <laughs> huh? Don't you blame the movie? Scary stuff. Don't blame That's what's coming. Ooh. Yeah. Why not? Oh, yes. I believe we have two cycles in studio right Whee! now. But first, we gotta introduce ourselves. <laughs> this is episode of 42. 42. Life, the yeah. media of life, the universe, and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're coming to you live here in uh, sunny Northern California. No, Southern California. <laughs> We're in North Hollywood. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I am Anthony Becerra, and to my left, I have... What's up? Carrie Lane here. Yes, and we're both on one side because we have special guests. On the other side, we have Sev Ohanian. Yes. yes. Hi. Yes. <laughs> Say something, please. Uh, Hi, my name is Sev Ohanian. Uh, I'm a co-writer and producer on the film Searching, and I'm so thrilled to be here with you guys as well as my guest friend, Natalie. <laughs> right on, Natalie. <laughs> Hello, thank you guys for having me and including me. I'm a producer on Searching as well, and I'm so, so excited to be here. Right. We're excited we're, to have you. Yeah, this is yeah. great. We're going to pick your brain. But first, yes. we got to do some crypt keeping. So pretty much where you can find our show. So if you want to find our show, you can find it on multiple ways. Uh, you can find it on YouTube.com slash The Popcorn Talk Network, as well as our official website, ThePopcornTalk.com. And you can reach at, reach, reach at us, reach at us, re, reach out to us <laughs> at Twitter at Horror News PTN. And uh, we got a debut of our Instagram. It's, it's up and live. Yes. Uh, don't that's why it took so long because I don't have a good <laughs> excuse. Um, but yeah, we got a new Instagram and it's at the same name to make things easier on everybody. Horror News PTN on Instagram. Yes, we will be uh, doing some. I just did like a behind the scenes for like uh, uh, we went live. It was on your stories, yeah. yeah on my story. I know social media. Um, <laughs> and lastly, we also have uh, Apple Podcasts. You can uh, go on iTunes. Uh, just type in Horror Movie News and then look for that thumbnail behind me right over there. Oh god, this camera's. <laughs> Everything's backwards for me. <laughs> Please leave a five-star rating. Five stars, five stars. And tell us anything you want, really. Any feedback, any uh, suggestions. Uh, and just like, if you love the show, we'd love to hear that as well. And yeah, any suggestions for the show, we take it all. Now, let's get into it. So, our special guest. So, I have a little overview um, of pretty much like previous work you, you, all, you all have uh, worked on. So, Natalie, starting with you, uh, you helped produce uh, Take Me back in, that was released in 2017. I did. It was starring time. with, oh, it was both of you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. That's the one that overlaps. That was <laughs> yeah. later on. Yeah. yeah. I, I do have an a, a overview for both what you guys have worked on as well. Nice. Yeah. So, it's, it starred uh, Pat Neely and Orange is the New Black's lead, uh, Taylor Schilling. As well, you also produced uh, Duck Butter. That was released this year, right? Yeah. And that uh, started Aliyah Shawkat, uh, Laya Costa, and Mae Whitt. Yep. As well as All About Nina, I, I, I believe 2018. Oh, it's about to be released this month, right? September 28th. September 28th. <laughs> there you go. And that's starring Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Common. Dreamy. Dynamic duo. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I love uh, Mew. <laughs> People yeah. Kind of, yeah, prefer yeah, her as Mew, yeah, so yeah. I was just like, yeah, she's great. She is. Um, and for you, uh, you have a, a good amount of producer credits under your belt, uh, starting with um, back in 2015, it was Memoria. Memoria, yeah. Yeah, and then led into The Intervention in 2016, The Labyrinth in 2017, Dismissed in 2017. And here's one that kind of stands out, um, like, I think in the public eye a bit more, is Fruitvale Station. Yeah, which yeah is that Ryan... was my first feature, yeah. Wow, and that was also Ryan Coogler's breakout de debut, correct? Yep, absolutely. Wow, yeah, and that got, like, rave reviews. <laughs> and now look, he's, uh, look what he's doing now. Yeah, he's doing a couple of small movies. Just, yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, still, they're still hits, yeah. <laughs> And um, as well as, uh, let's see, you also did, oh yeah, Take Me, that's the one where mm -hmm. you guys both worked on. So you, so so far you've worked, that was the first time you guys kind of worked together was on Take Me? Yeah, and in, in like in a really official producing capacity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was, that was the one. Right on. <laughs> and so from there, you went on to work on Searching, of course, which yes. is what we're talking about today. And also, I've noticed that you guys are doing a run, which is pre-production. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll touch about oh, yeah. that. We're going to talk about run for sure. Yeah, oh, right yeah. on. I'm down for that. <laughs> um, I did read the synopsis, and it looked, sounded very interesting. Um, but I would like to ask you, um, so how 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 did you come about producing? Like, how did you know it was... In a sense, you're calling something you wanted to do. And th you can answer one by one. We can start with... Uh, Seb, yeah. yeah. So, so for me, producing is 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 a passion. It mm -hmm. is my passion. 
And uh, I went to USC film school, and so did Natalie, and so did our producing partner, Anish, you know, Shaganti, who directed Searching. And when I was at film school, uh, I started seeing this pattern that the films that I wanted to make were often the films that the faculty would not allow students to make. Because mm -hmm. it would be the ones that would be, they, they would tend to be a bit more ambitious, a bit more dangerous, a bit more risky. And, and you know, they were encouraging the students to make more artistic films and films that would be maybe in my eyes a little bit boringer. Mm -hmm. So I kind of started creating this habit where every time I would see a student getting uh, denied their request to direct or write a film, I would just say to them, hey, why don't we just go and make it anyway? And we'll do it over the weekend and maybe we'll just use the school's equipment and you know maybe it's, maybe it'll all work out so i just kind of started this habit of doing that and i loved as a creative producer you get it you get to help create this collective vision with the director and and make something and like the, for me the pride and joy comes from like usually having to make the impossible possible mm -hmm. and you know we were independent film producers and we have been for a long time and i think that was ultimately what led ryan coogler to reaching out and asking me to help him produce fruitvale station so that was kind of the start for me Wow. And for you, Natalie? Uh, for me, it started a little bit younger, actually. I was in high school uh, in Burbank at Providence High School, and I was in a media focus program. Mm -hmm. And we would, you know, we'd split up in little groups and, and have to produce, direct, write, edit, you know, combination of roles per person. And no one ever wanted to produce, like ever. Everyone <laughs> volunteered to direct and whatnot. And I, for whatever reason, maybe I was like the teacher's pet looking back, but w would get picked on to produce every single time. And I was really good at it. And after a while, by the time I was a senior and had done a lot of like shorts and music videos, I was like, I should stop fighting this. Like, I'm good at it. And no <laughs> one else wants to do it. So maybe that'll help me stand out once I get to USC. Mm -hmm. So I just I just embraced it. And, and, and now I love it and can't imagine doing anything else. Actually, just hearing that briefly, could you both in your own words explain what a producer does? Because I think some people know the title. But yeah. what is like... Your I honestly actual... don't know what a producer does. <laughs> I was, about to say. I was, I was hoping saying one word, everything. <laughs> okay, yeah. I like that. Um, it's 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 tough. I mean, there's a lot of different types of producers, True. and you know the kind of producer that you know Natalie and I have been growing into because you know a lot of like a lot of the credits you listed off for me were me just kind of building my credits and building mm -hmm. relationships and a reputation. But it's, you know, as a creative producer, we, like Natalie said, we do everything. And at the same time, it's even less that we're doing so many things, but we're responsible for many things. Mm -hmm. And like the way I've always liked to describe it is think of a director as somebody who has a microscope. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're making a film in prep or shooting or even beyond, they are responsible to always have an answer for a billion questions at any given moment an actor might ask them what am i doing here or the costume designer might say is that supposed to be that rip or the makeup artist might ask about a cut or a location or i mean a billion kajillion questions are coming at them every second it's the hardest job in the world and they have to have an answer that it's very specific to what that is if they don't have that answer they're not doing their job but the problem with with that the problem with having a microscope is they tend to lose sight of the bigger picture and they need they need backup. A director, a good director, needs a good producer, or in our case, a good pair of producers who we can look at the bigger picture. So when they're focusing on the trees, we're looking at the forest, and we can always be like, hey, like in the case of Anish, that that decision you just made is is a great one, but keep in mind this scene is also about all these other things. So like, mm. let's try and find a way to like make this work for that. So you know, we're here to guide the director, but at the same time, it's you know, film. Sometimes, in my opinion, is referred to as like this auteurship, where it's like the director's vision, and I think that's absolutely true in many ways and, and fine. But you know, our philosophy as a team has always been kind of more of like a collab. You know, film I would argue is the single most collaborative art form in existence, no, I right? Like, I mean, I, I would, I yeah. maybe sounds yeah. like I'm, I'm overstepping my bounds here, but it's like you have so many different people with so many specialties, all collaborating to make one thing come to life. It has to be a collective vision, and I think that's what producers and directors do for each other. We we help each other in ways that we need we need that backup. Wow, I'm not even gonna add to that. Yeah. <laughs> down. I think it's a good summary. It's a great, Thanks. great explanation. Yeah. Well, let's say also uh, keeping on the topic of a producer, well, like what do you what they do? Um, I would also say what helps a producer out, as in like what skills do you find yourself having mm -hmm. be, uh, that that really help you in this position specifically that you're like, huh. I'm a good people person. Like I can handle yeah. talent, or like, huh? Like I, I'm very organized. I, I can, I can handle all these stacks of paper. Uh, I can handle the budget or whatnot. Like, what, what are some skills that you find personally in yourselves that really help you out? Google spreadsheets. <laughs> kidding, yeah. not kidding, but not kidding. Um, no, I think it's. Uh, I think you touched touched on it a little bit. Being a people person, but further than that, being a good communicator. Mm -hmm. Like we're at any given moment communicating between 
you know, crew members, making sure that like the studio is talking to whoever and and I think being clear and concise is like the number one number one kind of tool that you need. I agree. Have you guys ever seen like that meme that's like six panels and it's like what like my occupation, what my mom thinks yeah. I do, what my oh, friends think right. I do, what society yes. thinks I do. What I actually do. And then yeah. like for producing, like I'll skip all the other ones, but what I actually do, it's like a picture of a guy on a horse herding a bunch of kittens. And yeah. I think that's so true sometimes for us. Like it's like it's like, it's like exactly what Natalie said. It's on top of having a lot of patience and having a lot of foresight in a lot of ways and being able to kind of plan ahead and, and solve problems and put out fires before they before they come about. Okay, okay. I like that, yeah. Nice. Trying to be, uh, have some sort of foresight, you know, mm-hmm. in Absolutely. a sense. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like get, getting ahead of things for sure. Okay. We cool. have a live chat going. If you didn't know, mm-hmm. uh, viewers and listeners, uh, j- comment down below if you weren't able to join us live. And welcome to everybody joining us live. Uh, Rugged English in the chat says, love the analogy. You look at the trees while we look at the forest. Yeah, that's that was poetic. poetic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got you. Also, He's a writer. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah, co writer, yes. And uh, uh, Wellington agrees communication is key. Also, Wellington, uh, rugged English. If you guys have any questions for these for these people, yeah. wonderful people as well, please comment in the live chat. <laughs> Carrie will pick up on that and we'll ask them later. Um, also, just uh, just to stay on one last question with uh, the whole producer theme is uh, what would what would be some advice to say someone who's up and coming who who um, is interested in producing? Like, how would how would you, in a sense, advise them to be like, hey, you should try it out in this way. I know what Sev's going to say. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I, have, I have a lot of advice. I can give you guys the boring advice and the fun advice. The boring advice is self-educate. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all, these, there's all these amazing film schools that exist that are also amazingly expensive. I'm saying you don't necessarily need to go to them. And I've, I've gone to them. I've even taught at them. They're great if you can afford it. But I think there's so many resources more than ever that exist today for anyone who wants to be a filmmaker or producer. And there's a lot of books you can get online. There's a lot of shows you can watch that mm-hmm. feature this kind of stuff. That is, nothing stops you from self-educating. The second thing is, I think there's this there's this idea in Hollywood or people who want to aspire to Hollywood that you just have to convince one person. You got to get one investor to want you, you know, to your project, you yourself. You got to get one financier to take a shot on you. You got to get one person out there to take a chance on you. I think that's BS. I think that's become BS because in this industry, like nothing, it, it doesn't exist anymore. The only person you have to get to believe in you is yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think that's been proven true even in, in our case with our trio in a niche. Like the reason searching even came about is because on our own, we went out and shot something for $1,500. And that led to a series of events that got us ultimately having this film coming out this weekend. And again, at no point did we need somebody to give us a permission or approval. And I think that is, I think I've seen too many people waste years of like waiting and like having their script and rather than just kind of making the steps themselves. Mm, so it's, yeah, so it sounds like more of like creating your own opportunities, right? One hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. I, I would add to that and say take any opportunity. I think a lot of young filmmakers too, like they know, you know, the end game for them. They want to direct or they want to write, and and they won't jump in to do anything else or something that doesn't necessarily fit in their like artistic kind of wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. I think Anish is a perfect example of that. Like he he shot um, a a short film that Sev actually produced on Google Glass. (laughs) Oh yeah, yeah, they Mm -hmm. were trying to prove that they were like a viable filmmaking tool. And uh, they're not. (laughs) Yeah, they're not. But he, you know, he saw the opportunity that this is like a cool thing that no one else is doing. And that, that short film blew up, it went viral, and it got him a job at Google straight out of film school, which honestly ultimately led him to do searching. So Mm -hmm. I think that's just a perfect example of like, jump in and take an opportunity and just like you know make it incredible and stand out wow all right i think um we've settled i think i've sat, i'm satisfied with that <laughs> okay, we covered the producing and what yeah it's like, okay, helpful cool. for people to know because like it's a generic title mm-hmm. to sure. some audience because yeah, sure. they're like sure like what but they have no concept of what yeah. that job entails no, totally. I don't think I knew what it was until I started doing it, yeah. truthfully. <laughs> yeah. Or all the subcategories. Yeah. Right, right, right. Right. All right, so now I want to get into our feature presentation. <laughs> so pretty much uh, searching. Um, I have a, a brief overview here of searching. And, um, yeah, I believe we can roll the trailer while I talk about it. So if you don't mind. And then, so, yeah, director was Anish Shaganti. And it was right, written by Anish Shaganti as well as Sev Ohanian. Stars John Cho as David Kim, Deborah Messing as Detective Vic, uh, Michelle La as Margot, and Joseph Lee as Peter Kim. Synopsis is, 
After his 16 year old daughter goes missing, a desperate father breaks into her laptop to look for clues to find her. Uh, the, the, it was premiered at Sundance back in January. It won awards uh, the Audience Award as well as the Alfred P. Sloan Feature Film Prize. And it finally got its wide release thanks to Sony, Gems, Sony Screen Gems this past Friday on August 31st. It came in at in the top five at the box office at fifth place between Christopher, uh, Disney's Christopher Robin and Operation Finale. Domestically, it has made eight million dollars. Foreign, it's made six million worldwide. To, as of today, it's fourteen million worldwide. Jesus, it's crazy. <laughs> it's just crazy. Can you guys disclose the budget for this film? Or it's a lot higher than you would think it is. Okay. Um, and also a lot lower than you would think it is. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably be listed on the IMDb page eventually. Yeah, I, I mean, we'll put it this way. This is a film that has enormous scale for an independent film, right? Mm. There is, you guys have seen the film. There's like yes. aerial yeah. shots, right. crowd shots. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen entire childhood in minutes. We have lake stuff, other yeah. set pieces I can't talk yeah. about. Yeah. All this stuff, and we shot it in 13 days. My God! So, so if that gives you that, any, that should give you a sense of how much or how, how little we. Had. I promise you, it didn't cost. What was it? Fifteen million? You said. Uh, you, you definitely. You yeah. You've made fourteen million world, worldwide right now. So it did not cost fourteen million. Yeah. <laughs> Is it lower than that? It's oh yeah. Okay, much okay. Lower than that. I got, a fraction of that. I got Double some, digits. We made. I mean, just to put it in perspective, uh, no. like we, single you know, digit. Okay. We made it. We made it independently. Yeah. yeah. There was no. You know. There was no studio behind it. There was. Yeah. Sony came on after Sundance. So yeah. Exactly. Once it. We made. It was a it was a, a scrappy production. So well, okay. I, you say scrappy, and I, I like how uh, Wellington in the chat says the way it is shot has really piqued my interest. Yes, yes. Wellington. Oh I hope God. it did. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, okay, still sticking on that budget. I just have a ballpark of an, an idea. <laughs> okay. Because I know I, I read that uh, Screen Gems bought it for five million. Yeah. So I'm guessing if it but if they bought it for five million, they're trying to profit off of that. It'd have to be. I'm guessing. It costs five to seven million to make. I wish it cost five to seven million to make. We, you know, we'd have much. Really? So it was like no, three if million. If you bought it for five, well, you'd well, want to love what like your just, budget just, was. Just to like talk about the, 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 the yeah. of that. Like so, getting warm, getting warm. My real guess is three. <laughs> so the way the way it works is, you know, if we're lucky enough to premiere a film at Sundance, which yeah. we were, you know, we had our premiere at six thirty p.m. Mm -hmm. It's a dream come true for filmmakers, right? We're, we're after the premiere, we have no clue how the how the movie does, yeah. and mm -hmm. we're like all checking Twitter. We go to our <laughs> premiere party, and it feels really good. And then at one point, uh, our agents came and grabbed us, and they're they like, were like, "We have to leave." Yeah, they're like, "Let's go." And we're like, "Go where?" It's in the middle <laughs> of our premiere party. We've spent the last two and a half years working on this film, and they yeah. drag us out of our party and they take, take us like this top secret cabin. And then we spent from you know <laughs> okay. like <laughs> eight p.m. to six thirty a.m. that evening up all night in the middle of this bidding war about the movie and it's like all these nice. various studios came and and they were pitching us their marketing plans how they were going to release the movie and then their lawyers and our wow. lawyers were like negotiating what the fee is so so just to answer the question like the purchase price of a movie from a studio has nothing to do with the budget it's, oh, it's okay. all, it all has to do with how much they think other people are willing to pay mm -hmm. so it, that price increases in our case luckily because um because there was so much interest. Because of the demand, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, interesting. And it wasn't just the price. I mean, it, we, we teamed up with the right studio. I mean, they were so passionate. and They've, they've done such an amazing job marketing and releasing the film. So it, it's never just the money. But, yeah, our budget was absolutely a fraction okay. of that price. And so how, how did that feel being... And were you there as well? Both yeah. of you were all... Yeah. Everyone was there? Was okay. Nuts. How was that? Being taken out of your, your premiere party <laughs> into this cabin for, like, busting an all-nighter just to, like... Cause studios are hungry for this movie how did that feel when you were your film is in demand i mean it was nuts because like the whole the sundance legend right is that you go yeah. you make your movie independently you get to sundance which is like a high in and of itself and if you're lucky you'll be that like one two or like three films a year that have that all night bidding war and i kept telling like i had friends and family texting me like what's going on like <laughs> right after the movie and i was like guys it's not gonna happen tonight like that that happens like no percent of the time and then cut to like half hour later we're like meeting with the distributors it was nuts i mean wow, we like we, we always knew the movie was good we worked on it for two years we were you know we knew we had a good film but to get that kind of response and to sell it like literally six seven eight whatever hours later it was just it was nuts it was like an out-of-body experience yeah. f for me definitely especially since you're like going all night you're just oh, like yeah. We were just like, what's yeah? Our, yeah. our like, favorite thing yeah, was we go crazy. we got the three of us. So this is Anish, Nat, and myself. We got back to our own, you know, where we were staying at Sundance at like seven a.m., ready to sleep. And 
and we were told that they were going to announce the sale at 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. So we're like, great, we can at least sleep for three, three hours, hours and then, <laughs> yeah. and then wake we'll up. Power nap. Yeah, because yeah, we assume like once the announcement comes out, it's going to be even crazy. more chaotic. And then like as we were like closing our eyes at like 7:01, somehow it leaked and it became announced. We just sh- we turned off our phones and just went to sleep, and we woke up and it was like different. It was yeah. insane. I mean, our, it's safe to say our lives changed overnight. Really? Dang. And, Were and you then, ready for it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily ready, but embraced it with open arms. That's awesome. With all the tweets recently for the film, too, I saw a couple saying how it's doing so well uh, abroad, too. What's it like to have like your film be in the top spots? In, it's insane. I think it was Korea and Malaysia. We made $4.5 million in South Korea over mm-hmm. one weekend, which is just like bananas. Which apparently doesn't happen yeah, in that country. Yeah, doesn't happen. So mm-hmm. cool. It's been cool because... Um, What's been great about the release of this film, it's, it's a movie that we all believe is going to live or die based on word of mouth. And and we're really grateful that the word of mouth has been insane. Like, And it, it's funny, we were just talking to Sony recently. Like, If you look at the UK, it premiered like at number five or something on Saturday, but by Monday it had gone up to like number two or something. You know, nice. like most movies tend to decline yeah. after a couple of days and... It's just it just it speaks to like the movie seems to be really being embraced by the internet mm-hmm. and by people who watch the movie. So that you know it's we're in the middle of it right now. You know we have no idea what's going to happen, but we're just happy that anybody is seeing the film, let alone and people it's seeing it. But also like the coolest thing has been people tweeting about how they're seeing it not once but twice and sometimes three times. Yes. Just to- figure out if they could like find yeah. the clues and like mm-hmm. that is just as like a movie geek and a nerd who watches things a billion times it's just like yeah so cool that people are that invested and, and, yeah. and willing to go put money down to see it again yeah we natalie and i snuck into a theater here in glendale this weekend we, we paid for a ticket we i mean we, <laughs> that's true we paid Support. for the ticket sorry <laughs> yeah. Police Department, but we didn't like announce our presence or anything yeah. we didn't like introduce a movie which we've done a couple times mm-hmm. and it was just cool being in the crowd yeah um as like spies and like i remember there was a woman behind us who was a, a I guess on a date yeah and like in the first minute so as you know the movie yeah. takes place on screens she whispered to her date was like is the whole movie gonna be like this <laughs> like, totally, like not into not it. it and then five minutes later she was sobbing because right. as you guys have seen the opening it's oh kind of God. emotional oh, it's I like was. <laughs> i compare it to up which is like yeah. the first 10 yeah. minutes of up just destroy your heart mm-hmm. and you're just like oh my god this is the same feeling totally. and then yeah. there was a woman to our left who was so engaged at one point she was gripping my hand <laughs> like 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 literally and complete like, stranger talk, talking to the screen yeah it was really cool That's and then awesome. like the craziest things like people people clap at the end of the yeah. movie and then we've been hearing that all over the internet mm-hmm. and we didn't believe it until we saw it ourselves it's Yay. crazy Well, because it's a different environment seeing at regular theater versus festival. Festivals have kind of this heightened environment. Yes. Uh, Now, you had the Sundance premiere, and then you also had your Los Angeles premiere at Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival, and that's where I got to see it. Yes. And talk to you on the red carpet as well. Um, That screening, um, there were some moments where there was laughter. Mm -hmm. I can't quite recall exactly what spots those were, but were there any moments where people reacted to it in a way that surprised you or you found amusing? I mean, not at that particular screening, but there is there is a <laughs> Natalie movie. knows. Like, can we say <laughs> well, it without spoiling? Well, yeah, and we I, can, kind of. Yeah. Which part? When David's on you cast. So yeah, we there's one scene. This is this is something we found in, in previous screenings that like we wrote something Anish and I and we shot it as a team in which if you at one point David Kim played by John Cho accidentally streams a video of himself on the internet. It was yeah. always meant to be, like, in our minds, a, a beat of, like, showing you how little David knows about how the internet works. Right. Yeah. That's all it was. It was just a simple beat. And I remember when we screened it at, like, test audiences, people were cracking up at that. And we were like, mm. that's not funny. But then we were like, you know what? It is funny. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so that's been, like, we've had a lot of cool moments. I mean, it's just part of the process of making any mm-hmm. film. Like, you, the movie makes itself after a while, you know? Yeah. I think one of the laughs was, like, when the screensaver's on. Because it's very kind of old. Oh my god, oh, yeah. I and love that. Laughing, like, I, it's just the screen saver. Honestly, yeah. this is weird, but I got like reminiscence of like 2001 A Space Odyssey when it's just a blank screen yeah. and you just hear like the oh. That was like the visual the <laughs> visual equivalent to that. Hell yeah. Where I'm just like, this is amazing because it's mm. just so ethereal and it's so like majestic and it's just, it's so like, mm. st- I don't want to say dumb, but it's just so simple because it's like, yeah. it's a screen saver yeah. to like, I yeah. see that all every day. But you see it in the big screen and you're you're just in the darkness. You're like, this is beautiful. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I remember thinking, like, this is, wow. Like, well, how- I mean, that's well, funny. Even, oh, Go for it. I was say the, the Windows XP, too, just, just yeah. oh. one of the first frames of the movie. That gets a laugh sometimes yeah. because yeah. people... People are like reminiscing. I remember, like, yeah, I remember days, that. I guess. Yeah. Is yeah. That, even writing that screensaver moment, we knew in the script. This is early in the movie when David's asleep. He, you know, he gets calls from Margot. 
we were like, okay, how do we convey he's he's asleep and he's getting these phone calls? It's a calm before the storm. And exactly. Yeah. And we were like, okay, so the nice. computer can't be off, obviously. And and then we were like, well, what about a screensaver? And we're like, okay, but what screensaver? And at first we were going to do... Pipes. You guys, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Shout out to Pipes. Classic. Uh, but like, we were like, on a Mac computer, there was this one that a lot of people had, which was a definition. You guys ever see that? Where oh, your computer, yeah. It just like shows like the mm-hmm. word of the day mm-hmm. and what it means. Mm-hmm. And we're like, how cool would it be if it's like thematic? And it's like the word is, <laughs> the word is like foreshadowing. Oh, yeah. Amber. And then, and then we're like, wait, like, we realized that that other screensaver exists. And it was like one of those moments where we just started jumping up and down for like five hours. And we're like, that's going to be the sickest scene ever. <laughs> they literally jump I, up and down. I, have a break I love that. So, yeah. I love that. I love that device. It was, it was, I thought it was genius. I was like, wow. Like, yeah. Like, just I, at first, I just kind of give myself way to it, you know, and I mm-hmm. experienced it. But after this, I was just like, <laughs> Damn, like that was really effective. Yeah, well, the challenge for us was like, you know, we didn't necessarily jump at the opportunity to make this film. You know, I don't know if you know the story, but we were, Anisha and I pitched it as an eight minute short film, and then we were asked to develop it into a feature, which we were absolutely resistant against. We didn't want to make a movie yeah. on a computer screen. It sounded like such a gimmick, but. Once he and I cracked that opening sequence, the up meets a Google commercial sequence, Mm -hmm. we were like, okay, we can tell a really cool, engaging story that's humanistic and is emotional, and we can make it complement the style. Like, we didn't want to just, you know, like some movies that have been on computer screens, you could argue that it's like, it's kind of a, it's it's a gimmick, but in Mm -hmm. our case, we're like, if we can find everything that you do on a computer screen, whether it's a screensaver, deleting your trash, shutting down, writing comments, deleting comments, waiting for comments, if we can find the human, like, emotional connection to those moments, and if we can then apply that to a otherwise really good traditional story, it could work. And that, and I love that that was your reaction to that screensaver, because that was exactly the goal that we had when we even set out to make the movie. No, yeah, I thought it was brilliant. Like, it, I, well, for me, I personally, I, I conveyed it. I was like, dang, that's, that's solid. And the video chat, uh, you guys ended up using FaceTime versus mm-hmm. Skype, right? Because mm-hmm. I remember at the Q&A after the festival, you are commenting how point. the problem with Skype is once you're done with the call, it <laughs> <Exactly>. stops. <laughs> and so yes. it's like, how do you keep it on in that voyeuristic way that we can keep watching that character? Yeah, yeah. so so if, if, you, if you, it's funny, Anish and I were, this is on the early screenwriting phase, we, he did a FaceTime call to me, we were right next to each other. And then we end, when he hits end the call, what FaceTime does, as you mentioned, it like literally just shows you whatever's on your webcam. Yeah. And we're like, bada bing, bada boom. boom. The movie's going to take place on Apple computers with FaceTime. So, that's, yeah. that's one of the things uh, <laughs> yeah. I was able to really appreciate, too, because um, although everything we see like video-wise on the screen, you guys had to for sure like shoot that stuff and make that from scratch. But like the devices that are used to show those videos is all that was already there. It's like real technology that it already existed. Like you used the FaceTime, you used um, texting, and I thought it was so brilliant how you use everything that is already there for us that everyone uses, mm-hmm. and like elevated. Um, I, I guess like elevated their t- them as tools, and I just I just thought it was really brilliant how you guys didn't have to create. Um, those interfaces, you know, it was just all there and you guys just utilized them. And the way that you also compose, uh, it, like the, the shots were composed because, you, you know, it's a, it's a screen, right? Like there's, yeah. a, there's a certain cap as to how far you can see. But then you, you, instead of trying to like always keep it on the wide, like or on like the whole screen, you zoom in a bit. And then I thought it was brilliant too when you zoom in and you're able to see John Cho's face. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I don't know, but blank, sorry. When you see his face and his reaction to what he's seeing on another mm-hmm. window mm-hmm. is so brilliant. On this, at the same time, he's talking to someone else. I'm just like, wow. Like, how, was that, like, challenging for you guys? Like, for, um, I don't know if there's, like, a, I'm sure there's, like, a DP attached, but was he also, like, attached to, like, how the framing was going to be? Um, on the screen, or how'd that yeah, work out? Yeah, totally. So we, we had a traditional DP, uh, Sebastian uh, Barone, who who shot all the live action stuff in the 13 days, but that kind of framing that you're talking about mm-hmm. of the of everything, of seeing the, the web browsers and whatnot, a lot of that was done with our editors, Will Merrick and Nick Johnson. Okay. We actually created a credit for them specially because they, in a way, were like DPs of mm, of mm-hmm. the screen and not, you know, not just editors. Yeah, it's so like a virtual world in a sense. Yeah, they're directors of vir- virtual, virtual photography. Virtual yeah. photography oh, yeah. is that what, it, what yeah. the title was? We, we oh, literally okay. made up a credit for this That's movie. That's awesome. So if the Oscars was... have a new category of <laughs> yeah, best virtual go. photography, I think we have a shot. Well, they're <laughs> laughing, but like cut to ten in 10 years, it's going to probably exist. Uh, so have you replied to a tweet of somebody writing like the gimmicks of how they film the screens i loved your reply of, like uh no those were for real yeah yeah i mean I'll, you know this isn't the first movie that's ever taken place on screens and what differs from us it's kind of what you touched upon is 
So we, we made the movie for a production company called Baz Labs. Mm-hmm. That was also the same company that made Unfriended and, um, and Unfriended 2. And they presented to us um, a, a, a Bible of how to make computer movies. They actually mm-hmm. had, because they're making so many of them, rule number one was it's all got to be one big wide shot. Mm-hmm. Number two is it's got to be real time, no editing. Number three, it's got to be on one computer. And the three of us were just like, why? You know, yeah. like it's already such a restrictive mm. medium. We felt like those those kinds of movies resembled like the earliest cinema ever. Like if you guys have ever seen The Great Train Robbery or whatever, oh, yeah. it's like camera sitting like, there. Static. Static. Mm-hmm. Yeah, action's happening. Yeah. And we're like, there's been a hundred years of cinematic techniques. Like let's do zooms and moves and yeah. pans and mm-hmm. montages and mise en scene. Mise en scene. That yeah. one, yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's let's have fun with it. And that was kind of, you know, we just want to make something that would be a little bit more cinematic than you could probably. I mean, what's been great is so many people have said online, like, I went in not knowing what to expect and it, it was a movie and we're like, great. Yeah, we're going in with low <laughs> expectations, which I'm like, totally get it. Like, if yeah. you pitched me this too, I maybe would think this thought the same thing and they come out blown away. The thing that surprised me uh, with the opening, uh, like, shot of the film, which is when you see that desktop, I like how weird I felt. I was like, oh my god. Like 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 so many things went through my mind. I was like, am yes. I gonna be into this? Am I like and I was like, no, let's just give yourself just 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 keep watching. Give yourself time, yeah. Yeah. And then I was blown away at just how fast I I adapted to it. Mm-hmm. You know? I was just like, okay. And then like even the the the, 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 the quiet scenes where you, you just see the, the mouse like cursor just move around and search things and you hear the typing typing and everything. I'm just like, this is amazing. What's gonna happen? <laughs> What's he looking up? Like I'm just like, oh my God, I can't wait on him to type more that like awesome. like yeah it's it really grips you in a, a very satisfying way that doesn't alienate you at the same time i i really yeah. appreciated that like um it felt it felt like you said cinematic and i i ha, i i feel confident calling you guys like pioneers although they have been films such as unfriended you guys took it you said you looked at the rule book which there should never True be now. a rule book for film because it's an art form there are no like rules to art you know at least my, my opinion um you know el topo whatever and, <laughs> um but also like um yeah you, you guys threw away the book and you're like we're gonna do it our way we have a great like we have a great take on how we're gonna do it and you guys pulled it off and it's it's i think this is part of a cinematic uh, like a cinematic history cuz this is like a cert, this is like a certain type of like in a sense revolution pertaining to these type of films that are the on-screen genre of uh, like in a sense not really found footage but like on-screen genre mm-hmm, mm-hmm. films and the fact that you were also able to incorporate em- like emotion as well th- um, as well as you did, because I was gripping my seat at, in like the last act. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think wh- I think it's safe to now go into uh, spoiler territory because I do. Or I was gonna say actually, real quick, kind of summarizing a few questions from the chat and kind of summarizing how uh, you've had such a unique concept of how to do it, and then the story is pretty cool. I'm uh, not maybe not necessarily like you know, um, but. When you're gathering those ideas, are you keeping it amongst yourselves? Are you reaching out on advice on how to do that? Because that idea of not wanting someone else to go, ooh, I like this idea, and take it. Mm. For, for searching specifically. Yes. I'm yeah. trying to think. Yeah, I mean, we... Or, and then in general, as filmmakers yeah. of, you know, what is that process like? Of Do you find the people you trust and go for advice? Or, you yeah. know, how do you keep that those cl- cards close to you? Totally. I mean, mm-hmm. I think... Uh, we're not as precious about about certain ideas. I mean, the the funny things we used to joke about how it took us so long to make this movie. We were concerned someone else might beat us to the punch, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but we always were like, "Well, it's going to take us three years to make this. It's going to take other people yeah. probably even longer." Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the thing that it's funny we, going back to what producers do. It's like one thing that Natalie and I have kind of developed internally, and in what we do with all of our projects is we are very much about reaching out to the community and getting help. You know, even even the script that we wrote for this movie didn't even resemble a regular script at all. It was a script man. Yeah, I was um, reading on that. Reading that we, about you know, that. it kind of reads like a novel, and the texting looks like texting and stuff like that. In fact, Natalie forced me and Anish to rewrite it from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> but we 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 sent it out to like a lot of friends, and we we're like, hey, can you read this? And then we would get on calls with them and do like probably about a hundred questions over the phone. Did you like mm. this moment? Did you see that twist coming? Did you get that joke? Did you get that reference? And, and, and even during the editing process, we brought in our you know our filmmaker friends, non-filmmakers, just like trusted friends and family. 
And yeah, we're definitely not precious. We're more about like, how do we make this thing better and bring in the people that we trust that are like making cool things around us. Mm. Yeah, and I think that it, it could be risky having this idea of like trying to hold on to your ideas too tightly because there's a lot of ways you could protect yourself, you know, on a legal or, or whatever level. I think the filmmakers that are more willing to like go out and exit their comfort zone and get people's eyes on stuff tend to be the ones who I think know how to develop their material in a way that'll be more audience friendly. Does that kind of answer the yeah. question? No, it d definitely makes sense of it's, you know, getting advice from those you trust and not necessarily like everybody. But yes. it's yeah. like you had your own test audiences. So oh, yeah. Exactly. That makes sense of seeing the twist come, too, because if you already know what it is, it's not going to be a surprise. So it's like you almost need someone else to be the guinea pig. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And uh, let's, yeah, with that there segue. Speaking of that. <laughs> <laughs> segue. All right. So, yeah, let's get into some spo spoiler territory. Spoiler alert. Spoiler, yeah. spoiler alert. Zone, maybe. Yeah. Let's do it. Spoiler All right, guys. Alert. So if you have not seen spoiler Searching alert. and are okay with... Uh, uh, spoilers stay if you're not okay with spoilers <laughs> please, yeah le please leave yeah. <laughs> um yeah with our last 10 minutes uh yeah let's get into that ending because my god you guys blew my socks off um i didn't see it coming you guys yeah. red herring me so hard <laughs> like from the start his brother uh what hey, is hey, sorry Johnny, really quick question you said we what do we do to you we blew our socks. You, no, but after that, we read. Red hair. Red hair. It's not really a, a verb. But like, no, but really quick. Like, what was what was the color of the hair of the girl whose picture you saw? The color of the hair. Of the oh, she is red. She's a redhead. Oh my god. <laughs> was it fish and chips? Fish and chips, baby. Oh my god, they got me good. We red hair, y'all. Mm. Damn. Oh my god. Okay, that Literally. just clicked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so slow. <laughs> oh. Bye, Wellington. Somebody's like, oh, chat, uh, spoiler time, Peace. go. Um, Sorry, Wellington. But, yeah, don't ruin um, it. So far, so good. Thank you for not spoiling it ahead in the chat. But yeah, now it's spoiler time. Yeah, okay, wow, okay. That's remarkable. I don't know, remarkable. maybe, <laughs> did you chat much as a kid? Because I totally... I, when AOL chat first came out, I lied about everything about oh, who no. I was. Oh, my God, that's Whoa. amazing. Yeah, because I was ASL? like... ASL? Yeah. I, no, I, <laughs> Age, sex, location. Uh, yes. I was like, oh, I live in Australia. I'm blonde. I'm 25 <laughs> years old. And I'm like, you know, middle school or something at the time. Yes. So I didn't trust anything anybody said. So when there are kids today that assume, I'm like... Please. Yeah, this we, is we're like, old timers, man. Yeah. We know. Yeah. That was really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, like... The initial, the initial spark, suspect I think you guys sent make oh, did a great make the job. audience center yes. on is the brother mainly yeah. because since like that first I think when he's introduced is when he calls about asking about the gumbo the recipe gumbo. yeah and I'm like huh why is he making that like you know like since his mom like it's weird like it's I, sketchy it's he should sketch, have known his sure. behavior was sketch so that, I I like once I saw that I put it in my back pocket you know and then once it all kind of yeah. comes out well he also had the weed there so I was like yeah. okay yeah. makes sense. And then, yeah, I was just like, oh, man, they were, like, once you see those texts, I was like, oh, well, they were doing something. But then once yeah. we got to I was like, no, this doesn't feel right. There's something not right about it. And it's more like, I think the main, main focus, along with, like, red herring, is um, showing how far, how far um, David david has come like how, how how far he's fallen off mm -hmm. because he's been so obsessed and he's been like his daughter's been missing yeah. for days now and he's he's just becoming desperate and um it, yeah so you see his dis his his desperate like desperation desperation thank you <laughs> um come alive and attack his brother and understandable position to come from right and sure. it turns out I, he, it, I was just smoking her out and I was just like, mm. oh, snap, okay. Yeah. Now I'm just like, wait, so where do we go from here? And I felt like I was in limbo for a bit. I'm just like, who's my suspect now? I'm just like, what do I think? What do I do? And then it comes out, and here's like the huge spoiler, everybody. Um, so it comes out that it is actually Detective... <sighs> I forgot her name. Vic. Sorry. Vic, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I had also Detective Rosemary brief. Vic. Which yeah. is a little Easter egg in and of itself. Really? Rosemary Vic. Rosemary's baby. Oh, and? snap. Right, she she gave birth to evil, right? And, and the oh, real my God. That's the real bad yeah, guy in the movie. Of, I like that. My favorites of all and time. then your, is it your mother's photo or her name <laughs> that you used? Really quickly, Rosemary Side Vic. Note. Vic is a reference to Vic Mackey, who's a corrupt cop mm. in The Shield. Okay. So uh, we told you from her name. You didn't pick that yeah. up. Dang. Uh, and, then, uh, <laughs> and then yeah, my mother. Which you meant. So everybody in this movie, every picture you say, we had to get permission to put them on there. So as a result, 
every single photograph, every single name is a loved one of Anisha's, mm-hmm. mine, Natalie's, or two editors. And the piano teacher, Mrs. Uh, Vartui Shahinian, is my mother. Oh. It's her name, it's her maiden name, and it's her picture. We didn't put my last name to make it not uh, distracting, but it was, that's my mom. And Nat's sisters are in there. Yeah. Like, every, like our whole families are all over the place. Fun. Yeah, it's partially as a love to them and partially as we just had no choice. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Getting a little bit ahead, but... Um, glum- Glamoury says the I love that the writers wrote how awful comments are even about people who die or their oh, yeah. family. That was very real. Yeah, mm-hmm. especially like the like a lot along with like toxic fandom but also like with yeah. sensational mm-hmm. celebrity like, totally. like yeah. how sensational news, news yep. is now and how pe- everyone has mm-hmm. a voice to that sensational news that's happening. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was very uh, brutal. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you guys captured that commentary really well as, like, the, mm-hmm. I guess, the desensitization as a, as a society we've become to, you know, another human being who's going through something so hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was it was meant to just be touching upon it. We didn't want to be preaching. We right. didn't want to have an agenda. And it was just real. You know, it felt yeah. like it would yeah. add to David's descent into madness. Mm-hmm. And I think one the one thing that we always see is this ownership over tragedy mm-hmm. yes. you know like mm-hmm. in in any case where some let's say a, a, a well-loved celebrity might pass away and like there's everyone's owning that you know like this is i'm so sad and this and that and not to mention actual big national tragedies and it just felt like a natural place for us story to go and if we can have fun with it and at the same time like it added to the theme of how well we know each other and our online personas it was just it just felt like it was too juicy for us to not touch upon it yeah yeah, and it felt really natural. Like again, it didn't feel preached. It's just like, yeah, this happens, and you're like, oh man, like. <laughs> my, <laughs> oh, sorry. No, yeah, sorry. Like my, my favorite part ever is, is when Abby, her, her, you know, her friend. Oh my god. Is like, crying. Yeah, totally admits to using her to to get good <laughs> grades, and then the second she's gone, is like, she was my best friend. Like uh-huh. that's oh, yeah. the best best mm-hmm. moment for me. And then that yeah. one kid too, like, hey, I decided to just help you know, with the search. I was like, John God, Watson. yeah. I was just like, dude, you guys so are good. terrible. Um, I will admit, I kind of, I I'm not normally that person who can call it, but at the end, I leaned over a friend like. So how soon did you realize? <laughs> but it wasn't so obvious since I it's loved how it all. comes out. Yeah. And uh, it was more just I felt she was so suspicious to yeah. me. Yeah. And then like how there was the thing with the kid and it was the shot where he's in the background. I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean, if you, you, if you, if you ever look, look at that shot. He, like, pops out. Yeah, well, when he pops into the room and she's like, go away. Yeah, well, like, like, yeah. That's when yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah. If you ever yeah. rewatch the film, and I hope people do because it sounds like people are doing it, yeah. there are two times we see him in live action is when she's running out of her bedroom down the hallway to go to her car to join David at the lake. There's a shot of him. There's like crazy blue light coming from behind him. He's all in silhouette. It's creepy. Mm-hmm. And then the second time you're talking about when she ent- he enters he's the room, silhouette. he's like a Ooh. silhouette. He looks like the freaking, he looks like yeah. death. And it mm-hmm. was we 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 shot all of those instances like you know regular lighting crazy lighting mm-hmm. and we like Natalie said we did so much feedback screenings we found that like 90% of audiences miss so many of the clues yeah. mm-hmm. and like you know there even when David calls her saying hey I'm driving to the spot she's been going at call mm-hmm. me back it's 3:40 and she calls him and she's like are you at the lake he never said lake he's at the spot mm, I don't think I noticed yeah. that so like yeah. we found that audiences oh, are willing to suspend their belief too, you know you yeah. trust Deborah Messing because it's Deborah Messing yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's a mother it's, yeah, she's exactly. like a regular lady totally. and then but then you're like oh she would do anything for her child exactly. but I did like the twist of what happens with the daughter at the very end I did I was like I don't know if it's gonna go that way and so that one i was like oh good because I, I thought nope that's it yeah it, it definitely ends on a high note which is very happy very very nice to see in today's uh films um there has been a good amount of like the well what i've seen from horror movies are like the the really like oof that like upsetting feeling where you're just like oh my god i can't believe I don't know. I, I do enjoy that feeling, too, as well. But um, as we wrap up, uh, we have time for a, one one more question. And I just want to say, I want to ask you, is there, what about this film do you want audiences to take from it? And also, just what this film meant to you, like, making it. And you can go one by one or tackle each question or one question. It's all good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'd say, I mean, I think at the end of the day, you know, screens aside, mystery aside even, which I think is really the fun part of the movie it's a story about family and mm-hmm. i think the the whole trajectory of david not even knowing that he doesn't know his daughter does that make sense yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes sense um, checks out yeah like that to me that just the arc his arc with her and their relationship is what i hope people walk out of the theater with and just you know take a second to really reach out and genuinely communicate to people i think we we all talk and 
so many different ways, but, you know, ha- have a real meaningful conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree um, with that. Yeah, and I will say, you know, in, in, commu- in our next film that we're doing next is called Run. Mm-hmm. We're shooting up at Lionsgate. We're actually flying to Canada with Anish tomorrow. tomorrow. Wow. For the oh, next wow. three months yeah. uh, Just to work you. on that. Yeah. 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 It also centers around family. And I think that's going to be a really fun one to talk to you guys about because that's going to be probably the darkest thing Ooh. we ever do can you quickly Ooh. share the synopsis of it we'll share the unif- we'll share the one that we've released which what? is a story about a mother and a daughter and a and a daughter who comes to Sorry. learn that her mother might have been keeping a secret from her her whole life okay, okay. Nice. and it's called wow. run right on and with that we gotta wrap up ladies and gentlemen oh my god what a great great episode great yes. interview thank you so much for being here thank you guys we're just gonna finally wrap up and uh, yeah you can tell can you tell everyone where you, they can find you on social media and what? yes uh, you can find our film searching at at searching movie and I'm uh, Sevohanian I'm at Sevohanian and I'm N. Kasabian, at N. Kasabian. <laughs> right on. Thanks, guys. Cool. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been real fun breaking down this movie for sure. Yeah, thank you guys for having us. Yeah. Oh, no. And thanks I, for I, getting to the spoilers. That was so Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm glad oh, we, had to, we, yeah. we could fit yeah. it. All right, Carrie, All right, yes, so you guys can find me online at Carrie D. Lane. That's K-A-R-I-D-L-A-N-E. And again, my name is Anthony Becerra. You can find me everywhere at Tony B. Tony underscore. Be sure to go watch Searching out in theaters right now. Yes. Drive the 50, 60 miles you got to go to. It's okay. <laughs> It's worth it. It's part of history. And with that, uh, until next time, next week, another episode, and we'll catch you later. Happy, happy days. I don't know. Producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Spitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network. We would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. Producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Spitek, and the entire... The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.